Today we're going to be making Excitable Edgar from the recent John Lewis Christmas advert and we're going to be making him using wafer paper wings. In the beginning, I'll be working on a non-stick silicone rolling mat, as opposed to a standard cutting mat, which is essential when working with sticky wafer paper. The first thing I do is trim down a sheet of A4 wafer paper. Um, essentially using half a sheet, I split that into four even pieces. I then sketch out the shape of the wings using an image on my phone as a reference. After cutting the shapes out, I set one pair aside, placing the remaining pair texture side up on the mat. To create the spokes, I get some 26 gauge florist wire that has been wrapped in brown florist tape and bend this into the shape of the wing from tip to arm. I trim this off, leaving approximately two centimeters additional wire, allowing me to attach these to the body later on. Laying this first piece on top of the wing, I measure and cut additional pieces for each of his spokes, leaving enough excess wire for me to bind these to the main stem. Once I'm happy with that, and I have all the pieces of the correct shape and length, I further bind these together using florist tape. Position the wire on top and using a pot of water and a paintbrush, I brush over the florist tape and top with the remaining template, textured side down. The wafer paper will immediately adhere to the florist tape and now I begin to saturate the wafer paper, sealing the wire in between the layers, making sure I get into all the nooks and crannies. You'll notice that it's now become very sticky, which is why I'm using the silicone mat. But don't worry, as it will dry hard. Do be mindful, however, that it's very fragile whilst it's in this state, so try not to pull it around too much or it could tear. You'll notice that the paper is peeling slightly away from the top of the right wing. I'm not too worried about it, as I'll be covering that part with a little bit of modelling paste once they're dry. You can now leave them to dry, or you can do as I've done and just take a hairdryer on them just to speed up the process a little. As you can see, these wings are now completely dry. The next thing I'm gonna do is use a small amount of modeling paste, and I've used Prince of Passive by Sugar Fantasy here, just to line that top part of the wing. This will also cover the small section where the paper peeled away from the florist tape previously.
If you've never used Prince of Pest before, it's a really easily blendable product. It adheres by itself, so you don't need to use any glue, which you may need to if you're using any kind of other modelling paste. So it's perfect to use with wafer paper because you can just add it on and blend it straight in. Once that's done, I can begin to paint immediately. There's no need to wait for modelling paste to dry. I'm going to be using a variety of Spectrum Flow colours in order to paint the wings today. You can use water-based colours on wafer paper, but they do require drying time. Or I prefer to use, where possible, Spectrum Flow's matte colours, which have a very high ethanol content, which makes their drying time really quick, so it's perfect to use with wafer paper. I think many people see Spectrum Flows paints as airbrush colours only, but they're really incredible to paint with too. I start with a lighter yellow towards the tips of the wings and I'm looking to create that ombre effect by using orange at the top and working fairly quickly to let the colours bleed into one another. The last thing I do before moving on is just colour the tops of the wings and these will be the same colour that I'm going to be painting Edgar with and I'm using Spectrum Flow's matte leaf green in this instance. You'll find that the wafer paper does become sticky again and for this reason we won't be able to paint the underside of the wings until later but that's fine and we'll just put them aside to one side to dry whilst we get on with creating the rest of Edgar. Next we're going to move on to Edgar's head. Once again I'll be using Prince of Pesta to make him today. I always build my models up in sections, I just find that easier and with Prince of Pesta being so blendable it makes it such an easy way to work. First I'm going to start by taking a ball of modelling paste and work it into a bell like shape. As Edgar has quite a pronounced upper lip, I'm going to model his head into two sections which is just going to make it a little easier to control the shape of his face. So I flatten the bottom of the bow shape and pull out the edge slightly with my hands just to create his upper lip, which also comes to a little bit of point just in the middle. Once I'm happy with the shape, I use a small straight dotting tool to roll back the arrow for his eyes and then take a small ball tool and mark out where I want his eyes to be. Edgar's eyes aren't perfectly round, so with the edge of my dressing tool I just make the edges slightly more angular, pushing the surrounding modelling paste out slightly as I do so.
I roughly mark out the area where I want his eyebrows to be and I'll work on those a little later when the rest of the detail gets added. So next I'm just building up the bridge of Edgar's nose. He has quite large nostrils, so I just wanted to bulk that area out a little bit by adding some more Principessa, which blends so easily with the rest of his face, just using a mixture of my Dresden tool and my clay smoothing tool. Once that's smoothed out, I add Edgar's bottom jaw, which sits just a little bit further back in his head. So I just roll out a small sausage and blend this into the sides using the back of the clay smoothing tool. With a small dotting tool, I then shape his neck and just leave a small bib underneath, which I just find helps attach it to his body later on. I add two small balls of modelling paste to the side of his face to create the width of his cheeks and again just blend that in. I'm happy with the shape, so I'm just going to move on to his eyeballs. So I just roll out two small balls of modelling paste, add them to the eye sockets, and then using my finger and the Dresden tool, smooth them down slightly to fill the eye shape that previously created. His nostrils sit just above the halfway point between his eyes and mouth, so using my veining tool, I push up a little bit of the area we bulked up earlier, just ensuring the nostrils have a bit of height. To recreate Edgar's scales, I'm just using a small piping nozzle, and I stipple this all over his head, which might not be too visible here, but once we begin to paint, this will pick up all of that texture. If any of the modelling paste rips up whilst you're doing this, just lightly push it down with your finger. Lastly, to create his ears, I just make two small teardrop shapes, add them to the side of his head, pit them slightly and then texture them. So now we're going to move on to Edgar's body. I just want to tell you a little bit about Prince Pessa for those who haven't used it before. It's become, it really has become one of my most favourite products at the moment. Um, it's a bit like a cross between modelling paste and modelling chocolate. It's got real clay-like qualities. Um, it's made up using cocoa butter, so as you work with it, it's really pliable. It makes joining seams absolutely effortless and it's just a really useful and adaptable product. So to create his body, I'm just going to roll out a long egg-like shape, tapering it smaller at the neck and then using the smoothing tool to get rid of any of the creases or joins. And I then just pull out a little part of the back to make his tail. To make sure I'm working to scale, I quickly check the sizes right using the head and can check both against the picture reference. Next, I move on to the legs by creating a flat oval shape and pulling out slightly at the bottom to create his foot. Once I'm happy with the size and the shape of both his legs, I sit them alongside the body and use my hands and smoothing tool to blend in the join.
Next, I use a craft knife to make his toes. Edgar's got four on each foot, so I make one cut in the middle of the foot and then one more on each side to create four even toes. I then just use my fingers to round off the edge of each toe. So Edgar's hands are pretty basic. I roll out a long spoon-like shape, trim to size and create the fold for the elbow using my veining tool. I then create the fingers using the same method as the toes and then attach the arms into the body and blend like I did with the legs. Once I'm happy with the body, I trim and insert a wooden kebab skewer and then attach his head. So the reason for me leaving a bib on Edgar's head was to ensure that the transition between his head and body was absolutely seamless and he doesn't end up looking like a snowman. So I just use my clay sculpting tool to smooth down that neck area and then use a piping nozzle to texture him all over. I avoid his belly as he has a slightly different rib like texture here which I will do afterwards using my veining tool. Once the body is complete, I mark rib lines across his belly horizontally and then add finer vertical lines to create that rougher looking texture. So now we're going to move on to painting Edgar. I'm going to be using a selection of paints and dusts and primarily using Spectrum Flows paints. As I've mentioned before, their high ethanol content just makes their colours perfect for painting on small figures. Um, you can use them in the, with a combination of dust and you've got no need for any drying time. So I'm starting with his belly and I'm using a brown rainbow dust just to fill in some of the cracks and crevices that I created with the veining tool. I then use Spectrum Flow's leaf green to begin covering the rest of his body. Just be careful when painting around intricate areas like his eyes or fingers. I'll just come back to these later on with a finer brush. A couple of things you're going to notice as I start to paint is that you can now see some of that texture that we added with the piping nozzle and using Spectrum Flow's matte range just how quickly it's drying. So once he's covered, I apply some brown and black dust to areas that need a little shading, such as creases of his arm, toes and the underside of his mouth. So 
So next I'm going to move on to Edgar's eyes. A nice little trick I like to use is just take the plastic tubing that comes on the end of your paint brushes. They come in a variety of sizes and you can imprint them onto each eye to make your iris so they're completely even, the paint doesn't spill out of that intended area and it's just a good guideline. So once that's marked, I just take a small dotting tool and just push a hole into the centre of each iris for the pupil. So I use Spectrum Flow's matte orange to colour his irises using a fine brush and then use two small balls of black coloured modelling paste for his pupils. I now switch to Spectrum Flow's matte black to line both his iris and his eyeballs to make the eyes pop a little bit more. You may have noticed I've made a couple little errors as I'm painting here um, onto the whites of the eyes. Don't panic if this happens, it's so easy to remove. So I take a clean paintbrush, a fresh pot of water and simply just brush it off. I'm just using a cotton bud to gently remove any excess water before repainting. Um, you can always use your other hand to steady yourself as I'm doing here. So once his eyes are done, I'm just going to go back over him and just add a little extra texture. He has the odd black scale, so I'm just using a little more of that black to uh, add the odd spot here and there and then move on to some dusting. So I'm just using Rainbow Dust Iridescent Green and a darker pistachio green to accentuate areas he needs a little bit of highlighting like the top of his head and shading such as under his arms and areas that might need a little bit more height like his nostrils and his lips. I'm just taking this opportunity as well to add a little bit more shading to his belly. It's a combination of green and brown colours so I'm just adding in some of the dark tones now before I paint it with a lighter shade of green in just a moment. So next I'm just making Edgar's horns, um, so he just makes a little black in with my white modelling paste just to produce a, a sort of grey marble effect. Um, I shape them and then just push them gently into the top of his head. And again I'm using Prince Epessa, there's no glue required in order to do this, though you may need to use a little bit if you're using any other brands. I'm really sorry for the poor lighting at this point, it really was fading fast. So if you are unsure of anything I'm doing, please feel free to ask me in the comments. His wings are now completely dry, so it's time to add them on. So I just bend the, the excess wire that we left at the end at a 90 degree angle and insert them straight into his back. So I just adjust them and just make sure they're at the right height and angle and then I'm able to paint the backs of them which I wasn't able to do earlier on.
So I've mixed up a light green colour and I'm now just going to paint the belly. Just being careful not to completely fill in all of the cracks that I've just dusted and that offers a nice textured effect. So the finishing touches on Edgar are now to add his teeth and his, his back horns. So for the teeth I cut out a small triangular shape using modelling paste and then using a mixture of a craft knife and a Dresden tool I push them carefully into place. So all that's left to do now is just add a few more of those horns down his back and Edgar is now complete. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and found it useful. If so, please hit the like button below. Feel free to ask any questions you might have in the comments section and don't forget to subscribe to my channel to see any future tutorials. Thanks for watching.